to the heroes of today. Giving away free food for a decade. She shot people for food. A glowing tribute to our frontliners. And armed forces thank convoyed warriors. Let's get into it. Probably my favorite part of every day is getting in touch with you guys about the heroes of today. And today, I have four stories to share with you. The first one is a Vietnamese young man nearly a decade offers free meals to poor people. After witnessing an old woman picking up wasted food and trash, Lock Buffalo decided to feed the poor people with delicious meals cooked by himself. It has been seven years since he's been doing this meaningful work. And so here you see a picture of the guy offering the food. So, after resident in Tonkin Commune, Binchong District, Ho Chi Minh City, about Lock Buffalo, there is nobody who doesn't know him. Lock Buffalo's real name is Najun Trong Min Lock, 33 years old. Wow, he started doing this when he was young. Locke said he, he goes by the nickname since he was a child because he was a naughty boy and as hard-headed as a buffalo. Donating the poor people of a ton of rice during COVID-19. Now, in, in Vietnam, and in some parts of Asia too, they had these like little baskets, like kind of like laundry mat baskets, and they call them ATMs. Um, and people will put like rice in there for, for like the poor people. So you can come by and, and you know, you take a handful or a bag full of rice and then go home and cook it. Uh, some people did this for pets too. And uh, not Vietnam, but I think it was um, Malaysia. So going on. As the government applied national social distancing measures in early April, the first people Locke thought of were the poor. The manual laborers who made a living with the unstable jobs. Without hesitation, Locke spent his savings on a ton of rice, then divided it into several portions, each consisting of five kilos of rice, some packs of instant noodles, and a face mask, which were donated by his friends to distribute in the, to the poor people. For lots of people, five kilos of rice is nothing. For the poor people, it can feed them five through ten days. With my financial capacity, I could only donate one ton of rice. Then I posted on Facebook, calling my friends to donate masks and instant noodles, Locke said. According to Locke, gathering large groups of people to do charity work during the epidemic not, might not be good. Therefore, he rode his motorcycle to distribute the gifts to the poor person's houses. As one of the people receiving the help from Locke, Mr. Najun of District 9, I like District 9, it's really pretty, whose hands um, aspire living alone and making a living by selling lottery tickets. Yeah, you know, in Vietnam, uh, when you're really poor, these people will, will sell these like little tickets on the street. And as a foreigner, even if I did win, it's illegal for me to, to claim it. And when I came back in like 2010, they, they used to bother me a lot. But during the recent times when I see people doing that, even though I can't use the tickets, I give them money. I, I don't take any tickets either. I just want to help out, you know, so that's just a little story about the tickets. Due to the COVID-19, I have no job to earn for a living. In such a situation, Locke doesn't mind long distances or the weather com coming here to the present me the gifts from his sincere heart. I am very thankful and pray for his help. In a circumstance no better than Quan Tion Von Ta, District 9, said he runs a motorcycle taxi to raise his sensible, seriously ill wife. On normal days, he earns 100,000 Vietnam, that's like about five, well, that's about five, four to five dollars. The Vietnam Dong 
currently used to be twenty thousand dong one dollar, but it goes up and down. But during the convoy nineteen, he earns nothing. Thanks to Locke's help, we can manage to survive through this difficult period. I feel very touched by his work, Ta said. Empathy with, dif with, for the difficulties for the poor. Starting making a living at a young age, Locke understood very well that, and the miserable life of the less fortunate. Locke said, I started working at 14 years old. One day, I caught an old lady picking up wasted food of trash in an apartment complex. That image was haunting my mind, and I told myself to try to earn money to help the poor. In the old days, Locke worked as a construction worker, not earning much money, so he couldn't help many people. Since 2014, when he had a more stable job, Locke started using his savings to buy meals for the homeless. There's a memory I remember forever. Once I went to a rice restaurant and caught a person in a wheelchair picking up leftovers to eat. I invited her to join me for my meal, but she refused. She said if I gave my meal to her, she would take it. She would take it. At the time, I thought that the guilt of burning some something them so that they could not sit down to eat in a decent manner. Since then, I started to cook meals for the poor by myself. Supported by his morals and relatives, Locke has been cooking meals for the poor and the homeless around Ho Chi Minh City for seven years now. Understanding Locke's sincere kindness, a number of people joined hands with him, and Locke had more companions to, to, to help him do his charity work. So what do you think about that? Is anybody making a difference in your community? And are they only doing it for this? Or have they like done it for a while now? What do they do? Please like, comment, uh, and leave leave your, uh, your comments below. Subscribe as well. Let's move on to the second story. This one moves across the world to um, New Zealand. Now, in this one... This is about a photographer. A photographer captures her community during the lockdown. Okay. And so she, what she's going to do is... Hold on. So Ashley Taylor, it was, it was a kind of heartwarming moment of mother's dream of. It was so sweet, she says, to her three sons. They came up to me and said... We're really proud of you, Mom. No one t told them to do it. They said it all on their own. It was special, a special moment. This touching co compliment was well deserved because Taylor is a self-employed photographer. Be became some something of a hero in the neighborhood of Tamgumjum suburb. Um, what during the level four lockdown? Again, th this was in New Zealand, so they were pretty bad. Uh, arm armed with her camera, she pounded the streets most days, raising funds to put towards food parcels for people in the area. So this is kind of like, uh, I'm not going to say trash cans, but similar, where people would put donated food for the, the poor to get. Okay. Uh, shooting... From a safe distance, Taylor took portraits of families in front of their homes in return for donations to the the community food bank. The amount raised has reached four hundred well four thousand five hundred enough to feed three hundred extra food parcels for those in need. That sounds like a lot for a little to me, although she doesn't know the exact number. Taylor thinks she has photographed at least one hundred families. Her biggest effort in a single day being the 18 family groups she captured in films a couple of two of weeks ago. I I was out for almost five hours a day, she said. I definitely am definitely fitter than I have been, and I'm certainly feeling my age. But I'd love to doing it and helping others. Part of the motivation was to show her sons, Austin 14, Jordan 12, and Roy 10, it is possible to do something to help others, 
no matter the circumstance. It's been a lovely lesson for them now to understand you can do good in the crisis. My husband has supported me by watching the kids when I go out. It's not only her family who appreciates what she has done. Her efforts have come to the attention of the ASB who has recogni recognized her as an ABS goods as a gold isolation edition of war, giving her 2500 and a further 2500 donation to the food bank for her name. So I honestly wonder what she, she's going to do with that 2500 she got. That, that, that kind of defeats the purpose. Oh, I did good deeds. Now here's some cash for now. I don't know. What would you do? How do you feel about that? You know, if you go out and you volunteer clean the beach and one person uh, more than you are the most, so we're giving them money. Or if this person um, get, I don't know, whatever they did volunteer. They, they work for disabled kids. So we're going to give them money. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of volunteering? Unless, I don't know, leave your comments below. I'd like to know, should people get paid for volunteering? All right, moving on. Taylor was inspired by the, the Forest Project, which launched in the U.S. last month when the photographers in Boston decided to highlight the feats of the community. Okay. To raise, they raised 500000 for the food banks. I thought I've got the skills and I wanted them to, to help others. So I so I use my photography. So all right, so I'm gonna stop there. You know, I think it's really good. You know, what lesson do you think is important to teach a child? We heard that she did this to teach her sons the value of giving and being kind. And that's and I'm sure you agree with me. That's a good lesson. But um, is there another lesson that you wish you could teach your son? What and what would it be? Or what way would you teach? your children that it's good to do volunteer charity or to do something to make a difference leave your comments below like comment subscribe moving on to our next article and this one takes place in malaysia and if you're watching the youtube video you can see how they basically lit up the, uh, the taj mahal or, at least, or i guess the Puerto java is what they call it and they did this in honor of the medical workers. So let's read what they did. Uh, pretty, pretty in blue, silvered Paterat landmarks included government buildings were lit up blue as a sign of supporting the frontliners working tirelessly throughout the movement controls period. Okay, so the, the cityscape took on a on hues of blue to show the national gratitude of frontliners and all the essential workers around the globe. Initiatives known as Light Blue. In Kuala Lavor, the entire facade of the KL Tower was lit in bright blue at around 10 p.m. yesterday, followed by the Exchange 106 skyscraper, the tallest building 492 meters in Southeast Asia. Uh, I think uh, China or Korea would want to work with that. Uh, joining the movement are the Pentrex Twin Towers, Madaka. Okay, so they have all these buildings they're naming off throughout the whole country and city in Malaysia. And then other government buildings, like took like the post office and the um, the, the communication ministry, they all lit up their lights in blue as well. So. And blue was chosen because it is the official color of the medical field. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but it makes sense. Um, F Fidelity Territory Minister Tajaha Maza, who launched the Light Blue Initiative in Parliament of Lavor Complex in Parliament Wednesday, said its aim was to thank the frontliners wherever, whenever they were in public or private sectors for their sacrifices in the Convoy 19. Earlier, Angler and the Angler said that the government buildings, commercial buildings, and certain roads in Cote d'Ivoire and La Pointe would be lit up in blue lights from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. every day until May 3rd. Oh, that's so nice. This, he said, was one of the government's initiatives to show the appreciation to all those who are helping. Now, is your city doing anything to help? Not the people, but your city. Are they doing anything to express express themselves? Now, I have one more article that I, I want to um, share with you. 
and this was the armed forces in India uh, do a live, they held a, um, an air show for the frontline workers. So I'm going to read a little bit about that for you. The armed forces thank the, co the COVID warriors live updates uh, in a Thanksgiving exercise to laud the efforts of the country's healthcare workers engaged in the fight against COVID-19. The armed forces are holding several special activities, including military band displays and fly posts to shower shower flower petals on hospitals treating controversial patients. Later in the evening, the Navy will light up the warships to express their gratitude toward the, the frontline workers. While bringing the media on the Friday, by greeting the media on Friday, the Chief uh, General said, the Air Force will conduct a fly pass on the Singular to Travadon and another one starting in Dingsburg in Assam to Kardash and Gordo. I don't know the Indian cities. India is one of the few countries I have not visited yet. I mean, I know Delhi, and, but that's about it. It was. It will include both transport and fire aircraft. The army on part with the conduct mountain band displays along some of the COVID-19 hospitals in almost every dis district of the country. He said that Thanksgiving, and by the way, Thanksgiving, they're talking, this is India. So India is um, Islamic, mostly. And if you remember, it's Ramadan this month. So that's kind of what they consider their Thanksgiving. Uh, and so they started with laying the wreaths of the police in the memorial of, of Delhi, who helped in the MCO mandatory lockdown. Now, I don't know if I would give them a wreath for the lockdown people. I India was not so extreme with punishing people who broke the lockdown. But do you want to reward people for that? I mean, I'll be honest with you. To me, the two countries that were really scary were uh, Singapore and New Zealand. Other ones, eh. But anyway, that's my thoughts. And I brought this up too because yesterday I also read that, I think in England, it was a 102-year-old general, and he raised a lot of money, and it was his birthday. But many people donated cards and, and flowers and stuff to him. But the army did a flyby for him, too, for his uh, birthday thing. So thank you for the England general I read about yesterday as well. So have your armed forces done anything to promote the, uh, the hardworking people in your country? Yes, no, like, and subscribe. And thank you for joining me today. And remember, I'm running the program for the, the um, Blue Dragon uh, Children's Charity. If, if you subscribe, that's $1 more that they get. Hi, the small clip you saw was brought to you by Loyal World News. If you like what you saw, you should subscribe and, tune and look up my daily Loyal Real News report for its full version. If you don't want to watch it on YouTube, prefer to be on the road, I also have a podcast in, in every full-length video I put up.